morning. And welcome to the celebration of the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. The order of music and liturgy is found in the bulletin. Our presider is Father Patrick Kennedy. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. The music for our opening song is seen on the slides or found in the hymnal at number 658. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. Salt of the earth, O oh people, souls for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. As we come today to celebrate this Eucharist, we are mindful of God's love and mercy for us as we pause to ask for pardon and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
O God, who in the suffering and the death of your Son, you have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from the slavery of sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We'll be seated now as we listen to the words from Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who were mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with, her, with delight at her abundant breasts. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. reading 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and we'll acclaim the gospel in song. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among the wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals. Greet no one along the way. In whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will be returned to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from, house, from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The dust of your town clings to my feet. Even that we shake it off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
I'd like to begin by welcoming our visitors to St. Olaf this morning. I'm not sure <clears throat> what brings you downtown. Um, there's nothing going on. Oh, the twins are playing. Uh, but um, weren't they good the other night? Huh? Oh, wow. Wow. I even stayed up and watched the whole game. Or was it yesterday? I can't remember when I, when I watched it. But they were good whenever they won. But they haven't been winning very much. But we keep praying for them even still. But whatever you're downtown for, we're very glad that you've stopped in here this morning. You know, we have a lot of visitors who come through St. Olaf all year long. And I say this every week, not to um, sound like I'm always asking for money, because I am, but the fact of the matter is, is that I want to invite you to participate in our ministries here downtown. And if the collection basket comes by and you can be so generous to drop something into it, I would deeply appreciate it. We can't do it without the visitors who come into St. Olaf all year long, and we're very grateful if you can offer us something while you're here. I'd also like to welcome the people who are joining us on TV. Each Sunday, we broadcast this particular liturgy at 8 o'clock on the cable um, television station, local cable television station, and at 10 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. And then it goes on YouTube forever. So if you miss it, you might want to go on YouTube and you can watch it there. But we're very grateful that we have the privilege to welcome people who can't get out to church into our liturgies every Sunday. I've said this before, but you are a blessing to us. I am very grateful for many of you who write me and tell me how much you appreciate this liturgy. I know that what we do here touches you deeply, but so does your present presence touch us. So thank you for joining us this morning, this evening, or tomorrow on, uh, in watching the liturgy and participating in it. You know, I come from a different generation, and um, our religious education when I was growing up was a little more black and white than it may seem to be now. Black and white in the sense that if you did this, this happened. And if you did that, whatever that was, that happened. You never wanted to do that. Because if you did that, you know that you were in trouble. It's always good to do this. At any rate, one of the things that we did when we were growing up is we um, realized that our salvation was terribly important for us to reflect upon every day of our life. Salvation was the goal for all of us. We wanted to get to heaven. And as I said before, if you did that, chances are you weren't going to go to heaven. But if you did this, you probably would. One of the things that we did was as we realized that our salvation was to help other people save their souls. So there was a program that we entered into when we were kids in grade school. We would receive these little tubes, like little banks, and we would fill them with our hard-earned allowance. And um, they would be filled with pennies or dimes or nickels. And it was to help pagan babies throughout the world to be able to hear the word of Jesus Christ proclaimed to them so that they might be saved. And we learned, at least I thought I learned, that in that process, if you did that, you would save your own soul. So you can imagine that um, when the tubes were handed out, I took a few extra and um, I filled them, and I brought them back, and I believed that at that point I was going to go to heaven because I had contributed to saving people I didn't know, little babies, hearing the word of God, and at some point thanking somebody out there that they were able to do that with the little pennies I put in the tube. Well, lo and behold, fast forward the picture, I was in the seminary, and we were talking about salvation. And I was a lot more brash, and um, I didn't think before I spoke in those days, I'm thankful that I, I do now, and I'm not as brash as I used to be, but I raised my hand and the professor said, yes, Mr. Kennedy, and he was talking about how we were gonna save souls, and I said, um, 
Well, my soul is already saved. And he looked at me like, God, we're going to ordain this guy in two years? <laughs> yes, I said, the Sisters of St. Joseph, your colleagues, teaching me religious education, said that if I contributed my hard-earned allowance and put them in these little tubes, and it would be sent off to help pagan babies be saved, I would save my own soul. I've always thought I'm going to skate right into heaven because of all the tubes I threw into that laundry basket in the front of our classroom. And he looked at me and he said, you know, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. Well, after 39 years of doing the work of Jesus Christ and ministering in my limitations and with my strength, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Can it be that simple? Can we save our souls by throwing pennies into a tube? Well, there's probably a little bit more that's demanded of us. But how do we save our souls? How do we experience the salvation that's promised to all of us? Jesus gives us an indication of what all that means in the gospel today. He is sending 72 others out in his name to simply talk about what they have come to learn and know through him. They say it. We used your name and the power of God came down upon these people and they were healed, they were helped, and they were encouraged. Especially those who listened to us and received our ministry. But it's interesting that Jesus, in sending them out, doing his work here on earth, did not seem to complicate it for them. He told them what they needed to do to bring about the salvation he hoped people would experience through their work, their example, and their life in him. And what did he tell them? The first thing he said was, is travel light. Travel light. Don't carry a lot of things with you. And in the process, traveling light, you will see that you need, in your ministry, to depend on the good graces of the people you will enter life with for a brief period of time, or maybe for a longer time while you stay with them. But travel light. Because if you carry a lot of things, it's going to get in your way of being unencumbered to simply give what you have in your heart. What else did he say? He said, in all humility, go out into people's lives and bring your joy. Joy, happiness, the stuff that moves you and motivates you and me to believe in the first place. Wow. Our hearts are filled with joy that this Jesus Christ could do for us what we ask him to do to love us even more than we love ourselves, to forgive us when we fall flat on our face. That should buoy our spirits and strengthen our souls so that we can be about sharing that joy with one another. And we do it not because of any greatness in ourselves, but we do it because he does it for us first. Share your joy with these people, that what I've done for you, you are going to do for one another. And joy will be part and parcel of the experience you have with people you serve. Offer them peace. Peace? Okay. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Offer them peace. Where's the peace come from? Being secure in our relationship with Jesus Christ, trusting that what he says is true, and allowing ourselves to not get so caught up in what we don't do right and realize that Jesus Christ looks at what we do do right 
He looks at our goodness over and over again, and he digs deep for it to be able to find it. And to be able to do that with one another brings about peace. You know and I know there is so much violence in this world. People hate each other. People deride each other. People do violence against each other, and you and I do too. And we do it in very subtle ways. People don't agree with us. By God, we're going to talk about them. People don't think the way I do. By God, I'm going to let them know that. People treat us poorly. I'm going to treat them back in the same way. There's no peace in that. There's no joy in that. Jesus Christ is not there either. When we examine our hearts and we strive to be at peace, it comes first from him. It is he who says to us, peace be with you. Let my peace touch your soul so you can share it with the people around you. Accepting people's hospitality. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Going to somebody's house and eating what's before you. Trusting that when they open up the door and they say welcome, they really mean it. Although they do hope you're going to leave in a few days so that they're not going to have to put up with you very long. But accepting people's hospitality is part and part, part and parcel of the Christian life. Look at the hospitality we receive here. Wow, Jesus opens up his arms and he says, Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. It doesn't matter where you are in your faith life or how strong or weak you might think you are in your relationship with me. I am thrilled to death that you are here. And I'm going to feed you. And I'm going to nourish you. And I'm going to tell you some stories that are hopefully going to touch your heart so that when you walk out of here, you're strong, you're nourished, you're not hungry anymore, but you're willing to give what I have given to you, unconditional hospitality where you're at, and share it again with those around you. We hear over and over again that the Christian is supposed to be about the work of evangel evangelization, basically meaning go out and talk about the gospel. Don't do, don't do it with words. Do it with your lives. You don't have to go on a street corner. You don't have to go to a faraway place. Do it where you're at today, with the people you're at. Learn how to treat them well. Teach them a way to live in peace because you are peaceful. Realize that when you're encumbered by so many things going on in your heart and in your mind, and you live in an agitated state, it's not good for you and it's not good for anybody else. Dismantle that one step at a time. And if you can't, ask for help. Because when you're unencumbered, you're empty and you can receive not only what people have to offer you, but what Jesus Christ offers to us each day. I beg to differ that it really is, if you think about it, pretty easy to bring about the work of salvation in the world we live in. There are simple ways that we can do it. And Jesus reminds his disciples as he sent them out that this is all you need. This is all we need, even in this day and in this age. And when we understand that and appreciate that, try to put it into practice in our lives, wow, watch hearts change. Watch spirits soar. Watch the places that you are every day of your life be moved deeply, not necessarily by your good work, but by the work that Jesus Christ does through you and through me. His Spirit is alive and moving in our church. And that's why we come each time and each week to celebrate that event in our lives. We'll stand and we'll pray. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true
through God, but not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, the Lord glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. For all Christians, may we labor with joy to gather the Lord's abundant harvest into the reign of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we celebrate Independence Day, for the safety of travelers, for those who protect and defend our freedoms, for liberty and justice for all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here today, for an increase in faith, hope, and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of everyone who is supporting our 75th anniversary capital campaign, by their prayers and offerings, so that we may continue to serve the downtown community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the tired, the poor, those who are yearning to breathe free, and those who have nothing in this land of abundance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, may they rejoice forever in God's comforting embrace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we gather these and all of our prayers and we place them before you. In the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we make preparation for the Eucharist and bring up the gifts.
Almighty. Lord, may these offerings dedicated to your name help us to always serve you with faith, hope, and love, and bring us ever closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through your Son, Jesus Christ. For by your word you created the world. You govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as our mediator and guide. He has spoken your words to us. He has called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you. He is the truth that sets us free. He is the life that fills us with great gladness. It is through your Son, that you gather all people whom you've made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross, signed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race. You always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Father, we ask that you send forth the power of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this, the offerings of your church in which we show forth 
the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son. Confirm in us the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Archbishop, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times through the eyes of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, sharing their grief and their pain, their joy and their hope. We may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and journey with them along the way to your kingdom. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Olaf, and all the saints. We shall praise you and we shall exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us join together now and pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your love and mercy, may we always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
There are two announcements. Um, tomorrow, as you know, is July 4th. There will be one Mass in the church at 10 a.m. There will not be Masses at 7 a.m. or 5.15, and confessions will not be heard. The parish, is off, parish offices are closed tomorrow. And we've begun uh, remote preparations for our um, uh, renovation, and so um, there's no hospitality this weekend um, in Ferletti Gathering Room following this Mass. Um, it will resume next weekend upstairs in Fleming Hall. Yesterday I had a wedding, and um, I waxed on and on eloquently to the bride and the groom about the verities of married life. What do I know about married life? Absolutely nothing. But I waxed on anyway. But they chose the reading um, from the Beatitudes about blessing, being blessed by entering deeply into your life. And so at one point, I said to them, you know, um, the people who gather around you are a blessing to you. They are your support and they are your encouragement. They are your help and maybe your salvation along the way. So rely on them, trust them, and use them to continue to develop as you grow as a couple, as husband and wife. The Christian community is a support to people in their vocations. And um, the reason I bring all of this up um, is, is because the two people who brought up the gifts uh, this morning are on their honeymoon. Can you imagine going to Minneapolis on your honeymoon? <laughs> Anyway, they're on their honeymoon, and um, as a Christian community gathering around them, I'd like them to stand and let us offer them some support of our prayers and our encouragement as they give their more love. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for up the gifts, too. We'll stand and we'll pray. I did ask them how it's going, and they said, wonderfully. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, wait a few weeks, and you'll find out what it's really like. Oh, I'm just teasing, I'm teasing. Let us pray. Lord, you have replenished us with such a great gift. Help us to use them wisely and generously, not only for our own sake, but for the sake that you send, that you allow us and send us the people we serve. May we and them gain the prize of salvation so that we can never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Oh, no.